I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're here now speaking with Vanessa Belair, who is the representative for the California Charter School Association. Okay. Congratulations and Thank thanks you. for being here. Thank you. So tell us about yourself. Tell us, tell us where you teach and, and tell us what you teach. Okay. So this is my 10th year teaching. I teach at Delta Elementary Charter School in Clarksburg. I teach fourth grade this year. So um, I taught second grade last year, so fourth grade this year. So you're a multi-subject teacher, yes, obviously multiple in fourth subjects. grade. Yep. Okay. So tell us about your school. Tell us about the, the little school where you teach. Well, it's a small uh, rural charter school. We have about 300 students. So two fourth grade classes. I have um, almost 30 kids in my class. So um, great community, Ag very agricultural. We use the community and, the, agri and you know, the farmers and our ag as part of our, who we are, our identity, our identity of our school. So what's it like teaching at a, at a small uh, school that's kind of a community type of school where everybody knows everybody? It's wonderful because you have amazing community support. Um, being a charter school, our community is, is part of the reason why we're there. So they're very personally invested in our school and they want to see us succeed and um, they help in tremendous ways. So, you know, inside the classroom, field trips outside the classroom. So, yeah. so tell us about your class. Um, this year, um, you're a rock star when you enter fourth grade. We uh -huh. have a little rock star theme going on. So, um, we, fourth grade is a lot of California history. Um, we do what's called GLAD, which is Guided Language Acquisition by Design, which is a wonderful program that incorporates science and social studies that we do every single day in our classroom. So, um, we take monthly field trips, which we're very, we're very lucky to be able to do in our school. So where do you go on your field trips? Uh, locally, we go to we'll go to a, a grape farm with the local wineries. Um, we go to the local um, produce and pumpkin patch in West Sacramento. We'll we'll go to the railroad museum in Old Sacramento. We'll um, we try to do a lot of them are farm based and agricultural based because that's like I said that's kind of the identity of our school and who we are. And we try to incorporate math into that and science and social studies and everything that we can. So when you're doing that, when you're taking students out into, you know, outside, how do you, how do, you do that connection with the math and the science when you're out, say, at a, at a pumpkin patch or a wine? Great question. Well, we actually have our own learning garden, too, which is mm -hmm. um, about half a mile down from our school. Um, and the students are responsible for, you know, measuring out and plotting where the plants are going to go. And, you know, you have to put it so many centimeters in the ground. And it, it, you know, just um, agriculture in general has so many opportunities to learn about math. I mean, on top of science, that um, they're making measurements and they have to know how much to water and they have to know, um, you know, how how much um, soil to put in before when we do our planter boxes and so it's a yeah. So it's the practical applications of math and science. Yes. Right? Yeah. That that you know we don't normally get to do in classrooms all the time. So I feel very fortunate to be able to do that with my students. And you're teaching them science without them realizing exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> it's fun. They love it. And we, yeah. you know, we will make salsa afterwards with our vegetables that we do or, mm -hmm. you know, so we'll sell them at a, at a stand next to the school. So, so uh, what, what are some of the challenges you're seeing uh, in the classroom uh, lately? Or let's, let's say this year alone, we were talking about, let's talk about Common Core. Common Core, and, yeah. And how that's going to kind of, uh, you know, have you changed the way you might do things? Well, I think that the hardest thing that's going to come with Common Core is that um, there's not a lot of knowledge around it yet, so there comes fear with that and not knowing how you're going to incorporate it into the classroom. Um, we've been so, in 10 years, been so, in my 10 years of teaching, we've been so um, focused on um, the CST test mm -hmm. and how to not teach to the test, but how to um, relate all that information so they can take the test well. So this, that's completely, like, it's going to change completely. So I, I think what's going to be the biggest, the hardest thing with Common Core is going to be how um, are we going to change our teaching style to adjust to, to that. But I think it's wonderful. I think it's going to be a great, a great thing. Why do you say that? Why? Um, I think that the hardest thing that children, for children to do is problem solve. And I, that's what I see Common Core as being, is their ability to be able to problem solve better and reason better. And um, that only makes for... Um, smarter adults and for <laughs> productive citizens later on. So I think, it, I think it'll be a wonderful thing. 
Do you think that, well, in your, all your years of teaching, that'll probably be your biggest uh, change to yes, date? Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, yeah. and I don't see that standards are, ch are changing that much. I just see it's in the application of how we're going to teach them. So, you know, the strands in math are changing and, and how, we, um, how we want the kids to think about learning and think about how to solve problems and think about how to do their work. So. Did you see problem solving as an issue for a lot of students? Um, not having not that an skill? issue. I just think, well, I think it's one of the most difficult things for, for children to do. Uh, you know, and it is a difficult thing to be able to do. So we need to teach them how to do that. I would say yes, I think it is a, it has been a, it's, I've seen it as a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, kill and drill and being able to memorize things and, and do that kind of math is, I think, a lot simpler than the problem solving that it'll take. And Have you seen a lot of changes over the years in education since you started? Um, Maybe expectations of teachers or more expectations of students? Yeah, I think so. You know, right when I got out of college, was the Goals 2000 was kind of going away and the, and the CST was coming in and the California State Standards. So um, I think the expectations for students has gotten higher and I think this has made it even higher, which I, I always have high expectations for my students, so I think it's wonderful. Um, and I really like the Common Core fact that um, across the board that everyone's going to be held to the same standard. Mm -hmm. So it was so very subjective before in how to measure it. So uh, yeah, this is going to be a good tool of measurement, I think, for that. So what do you do to motivate your students? What are some of the things that, that you apply in your classroom to kind of spark them a little bit? Oh, besides be crazy? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh, I, you know, I, I'm a really positive person and I'm really passionate, so I kind of take the theme of what we have for a year. My, my theme changes usually every year of what, what I do, and so it's a rock star theme this year. So, um, you know, we're in rock groups and um, we sing songs in between transitions, and um, it's just showing them that, you know, it sounds kind of cliche sometimes, but learning can be fun. And that we, you know, I, I really try to ha create authentic, authentic lessons so it's not just from the book. Everything that we do, I want it to be different. and you know, something that everyone's going to love. Um, yeah. So what motivates you, uh, what motivated you, I should say, to, to be a teacher in the first place? Was this always a, a lifelong plan yeah, of yours? Yeah, it, it was. I know it sounds, but yeah. Um, I've always, all the jobs I ever had, you know, in high school or even before that were, were with kids. So, and I just always knew I wanted to do it. And you always have that one teacher, the one teacher that's... The, and you had that I one did. teacher? I did. He was my sixth grade teacher, Mr. Really? Boyce, yeah. And he's incredible, taught for, I don't know, 38 years or something. And yeah, he was super passionate. And, you know, I said to myself, and I actually say it every, I try to say it every day, you know, I want to be that teacher that kids remember forever. I want to be that Mr. Boys that, you know, I want to be that teacher that he was for me. So that has that passion that, that you know, I can relate to all my students. So. Relate all my students. So, what would you say to uh, to that person who's considering teaching as a profession? You know, if you were to make a, a sales pitch, what would you say? <laughs> I try to encourage a lot of people actually to go into teaching because the biggest thing that I that I tell them is every year is is a new beginning. You're going to start over every single year, and there's not other jobs you get to do that. You know, you you of course there's the whole thing you inspire children and mm -hmm. you know. Your colleague, my colleagues are amazing that I work with. Um, but yeah, you just every year you get this new chance to to start over and and be the best that you can be. And so that's that's all worth it right there. And so now this year you are the first uh, teacher of the year for the California Charter School I Association am. in it's Sacramento very County. Exciting. How does that feel? Yeah, good. really good. It feels great. Yeah, and I and I love working for a charter school, and I love the traditional public too. You know, it's just kind of where I landed in the charter system, and I'm very very happy there too. So. So you would definitely um, suggest people consider teaching if it's something that they have kind of Absolute, hunger for. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, congratulations to you. We're glad to have you with Thank us you. and be the, the first one uh, from from your organization to represent. Thank you. We've been speaking with uh, Vanessa Belair, who is the first teacher of the year for the California Charter School Association in Sacramento County. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much.